So, before I left on my last vision quest back last September, my dad had brought an article home from the paper. And they were auditioning for a community production of Kitchen Witches. So I thought, you know what? At that point, I was already starting to think, I'm not going to judge. The confirmation I was for that I received while I was in Arizona. When I came back and went through all of my, my anger, my depression, and received the answer that, you know, that I was, I finally realized that I, I've been pushing it away. That's when I decided that I'm going to, if it means doing a life of community theater, fine. Mm. Fine. At least I know that I'm living. It's that it is in vibrational alignment with my true destiny that I experienced 10 years ago. How can that be wrong? Mm. How can such overwhelming destiny be wrong? So, I get a phone call from this guy, and he says, Listen, uh, Kitchen Witches is done, but we're doing an audition for Guys and Dolls. Would you like to come out? Sure. I went out there. I got the lead role. Right. Got chummy with the director. Mm. Was going to audition for The Lion King that they were going to be doing in Singapore. And it just seemed like every single thing that I tried to get in, you know, ready for that audition fell apart. This was after Guys and Dolls had ended. Mm -hmm. And it was through that that the director, who was helping me with a, a song that I was trying to prepare that I didn't get around to finishing because it was just not enough time and all everything was trying to stop me from going, mm -hmm. that um, he had asked me, he says, would you like to come out and audition for the show that I'm going to be doing, which is a professional show, in the summer? And I said, sure. So I came out and with him and crashed the auditions and got hired and not just got just not just one show but two and was actually probably going to get into a third but because of budget reasons the the show had to, was changed to another show um i look back since i've come home in last september and i haven't had to look for any of this everything has the fact that i'm sitting here today is a result of you know, getting hired out here and, 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 you know, showing the guy that's our stage manager who works at a gallery, oh, I've got some paintings, look, look at these. And it's led to this. I haven't had to search for anything. Mm -hmm. All of this was the result of just a little newspaper clipping that I, that I decided I was going to respond to mm -hmm. when I was finally ready to set aside all my judgment and set aside the ego and follow this path. You can't judge anything. You can't judge anything because God works in the most subtlest of ways. You know, it, it isn't always this profound. It is. It can be. It's there when we need it. But generally, most of the time, you've really got to be paying attention mm -hmm. because God works in such on such a subtle level. You know, from a simple newspaper clipping that led to an audition for a community show that led to a professional. Show. I mean. It's just keep coming. It's just coming and coming and coming. I haven't had to look for any of this. And when you read these books about the law of attraction, that is what they talk about. You have to come from a place of love. Mm -hmm. You have to feel it. You have to have tr faith and trust that you deserve it and that you're ready to receive it. And if you can, you can get that. And it's not an easy task. It, it isn't easy. I, I know that it, you know, once you get it, it is. But the journey there can sometimes be you know, it, it can seem hopeless at times. You know, I say that, you know, those of us that are dedicated to becoming complete and whole within ourselves and, and, and learning to love our fellow brother and sister, you know, we deserve a medal because the path to self-discovery is not an easy path. Mm. It can be very trying at times. But all of this has come about from me finally, finally trusting that if I am doing what it is that I love so much, even if I never ever become successful as an actor, I've learned to paint, that I could, I, I've learned that I can paint in a way that, that obviously is having a profound effect on people, mm. in a way that allows me to, you know, to portray my, my extreme sense of spirituality. And through doing all of this, I'm able to, eventually I'll meet the girl of my dreams and I'll have the job that 
may not be what I originally expected or sought out to do, but that all of the financial and emotional abundance that I could ever want in life will come as a result of me going with the natural flow of life. And that's a big secret, isn't it? It's the thing. Yeah. And something you mentioned, if, if you never become successful as an actor, but what I, I think that I, when I listen to you and, and just knowing you for this short while, you're successful as a human being and you're spreading so much light and love and um, whatever title, job title you want to call it, um, you've tapped into something so special. You There's, are a success. You know something? I agree. Mm. And there's a line from, from the movie, uh, Peaceful Warrior. It's based on a book by Dan Millman. Mm -hmm. And in it, uh, the, the, the actor that plays Dan Millman is in a scene with, uh, with Nick Nolte, who plays Socrates. And Socrates says to him, he says, he says, you know, you may or may not compete in the Olympics. He says, but you are something exceptional either way. Mm. You know, and that's, that really had a lot of impact on me because I, I, I thought, to, you know, I'm trying to think of another way to put this. We all have a, a, a purpose and a destiny and, and you know, it's, it's not about it's not about the destination, it's about the journey we take to get there. Okay. And sometimes that's a hard lesson for people to learn. Mm -hmm. um, Wayne Dyer said something else that really, that I, really resonates with me. And it's for those of us that sometimes lose faith. And if you look in nature, every snowflake that you can look at has this intricate little pattern and, and it is unique from every other snowflake. Flowers, you know, water, streams, everything seems to, to always be in perfect harmony. You know, water doesn't ever try to go bash through something. It, eventually it will, it, well, it will over time. It will always get to where it's going. It can never be obstructed. It will eventually fill up and overtake. Flowers always go towards the sunlight that's conscious intention right there. Mm. There is something in nature that is always provided for. It always seems to be in a state of self-perfecting. If it dies and doesn't work, it somehow comes back as a seed with something stronger and grows. It, it's always evolving, always becoming perfected. How can we, you know, if, if that's the case, then how, it, it's got to be the same for us. Mm. You know, that natural, you know, you, you look at the seasons and, and the way they change and everything seems to be, you know, working to provide for itself. Mm -hmm. I can only assume that the natural flow of life follows the same natural course. Mm. But it's our conscious, it's our ego and our, our lack of faith in that that obstructs it. You mentioned when you were 19 and you were laying in bed, it felt like a light was switched on. Mm -hmm. And would you call that becoming enlightened? I, I wouldn't call it enlightenment, that necessarily enlightenment. I would call that an awakening. And because you're awake, it doesn't mean that from that point forward you weren't going to go through anything else, that everything was going to flow because you still had to face your fears. Oh, yes. You still had to go through so many oh, yes. other journeys. And so even in that moment, the, the light, um, it still keeps flowing back to you, but you still had some things to clear out. Is that right? That's right. That's correct. That was just the beginning for me. Right. That I knew as I was searching for, you know, for uh, acting training, mm. that I was somehow, there was some part of me that was, that was telling me on a deep level that, Cameron, you're gonna be in for one amazing ride. <laughs> and it's not always gonna be pleasant, but this is the beginning of something very, very important. Beautiful. And I have experienced enlightenment on a few occasions, um, but, 
then of course the mind fills up again. You know, the result, or, or I guess the goal for me is learning how to eventually get to a point spiritually and emotionally where I can sustain that indefinitely. Mm -hmm. And if you were to ask me what enlightenment is, I don't think there's an answer to that question because I think that there will only be, there will only ever be one enlightened Jesus Christ. There will only be one Buddha. Mm -hmm. There will only be one Gandhi. There will only be one Eckhart Tolle mm -hmm. or, you know, one Neil Donald Walsh or one enlightened, there will only ever be one enlightened Cameron. Mm -hmm. The same way as there will only be one enlightened Amy mm -hmm. or one enlightened David, you know. It's, the experience of enlightenment is unique to all of us. Mm -hmm. And I've often, you, you, I've, I've watched a lot of videos and I've read a lot of books and you know, you always hear people, one of the, the questions that they ask that, you know, is very, very difficult to answer is what is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. And I thought if somebody was going to ask me that question, I finally feel like I have an answer now. Now that may evolve and change later, but if you were to ask me what is the meaning of life? I actually designed my own quote and hopefully it sounds eloquent enough that, you know, it gets the message across. What is the meaning of life? To me, the meaning of life is to give life meaning and to use that meaning with which to grow, evolve, and expand our awareness into ever more conscious versions of that which we call self. Beautiful. You mentioned earlier about channeling the Orion people. Mm -hmm. Will you share a little bit more about that experience with us? Sure. Um, when I came back from my first vision quest in Arizona, I went with a friend. I was, very, I was very afraid to go by myself. And this friend I had met through a group that I was invited to meditate with on Tuesday evenings. And they were very much involved with the whole, a lot of them with the Pleiadian, um, you know, star seed, star child thing. And I just, at the time, I'm going to be blunt. <laughs> I thought that sounded, at the time, I was still very spiritual, but that sounded like a, a lot of new age fluff to mm -hmm. me. And I just, somehow, I just, I thought, you know what, I just, yeah, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But then there was a part of me that was going, Cameron, you know, you found yourself here in a way that you didn't have to look for, and you seem to be surrounding you seem to be surrounded by a lot of it and you're obviously having some, if you're having such a strong emotional reaction to it, you have to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you're afraid to look at? Maybe, you know, you're trying to be prepared. I think that at the time I was being prepared to open my mind up to something a little different. I don't know who the Pleiadians are. I believe that people are in connection with them. But when I came back, my, I, I, I had an experience that I was, I, while I was out there and I was looking at a star and both my friend and I were seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. These two stars were doing something I have never seen a star do before. They looked like they were expanding with all these colors. Now, there are a few stars in the sky that on a clear night you can see they change all those different colors from green to blue to red. Like they're, they're, um, you can see them, and, and they, they take the same course as, as, as the stars in the sky throughout the evening. They rise to a certain, you know, and then, and then they set. And, mm -hmm. But where we were and what we were witnessing, we thought that we were seeing some kind of UFO activity out there. Arizona's, you know, notorious for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And at one point, my buddy and I started chanting at the star, and it seemed to expand. I mean, it was, I, we were seeing colors and it was so large, it, it looked like it, it had been enlarged in the sky to such a size that I've not seen that. I've not seen that anywhere. And I could, you know, you could sit down next to a scientist with me and, and you know, we could both look at the same thing and say, no, that's a star. Well, you could even observe it through a telescope, but what we saw that night, it was like the star took off its mask and we saw something different. 